So welcome to 3.1. We're going to go over multiplying and dividing integers. So hopefully in sixth grade you started this process. So we have negative 5 plus negative 5 plus negative 5 is how much you think? Well, if you owe five to one person, say five dollars, and you owe five dollars to another person, and you owe five dollars to a third person, right? You owe 15. So negative five plus negative five plus negative five is negative 15. If you owe six dollars to one, another six to another one, another six and another six, you owe a total of 24. And as you look at that, you realize hopefully that there was a shortcut. And that shortcut is right beneath each one, right? So negative 5, 3 times, negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And negative 6, 4 times, is negative 24. So what's the pattern here? Well, when you're multiplying, these are integers. Integers are just whole numbers that are positive or negative. So looking at that, in the warm-up, we had one negative in the problem, the answer was negative. Well, with four negatives being multiplied, well, would the answer be positive or negative? We'll find out. All right, so the rules for multiplying and dividing rational numbers, which include fractions, decimals, and integers, are the same. One negative sign in the problem creates one negative sign in the answer. So negative 4 times 7, negative 28. 4 times negative 7, that's just another way to write multiplying, is the same. It has one negative in the problem, the answer is negative. 2 times negative 7 times 2, well, 2 times negative 7, negative 14, negative 14 times 2, this is still negative 28. Notice, it doesn't matter how many numbers there are. If there's one negative in the problem, one negative, the answer is negative. Same rule for division, 72 divided by negative 8, negative 9, negative 72 divided by 8, still negative 9. This one, by the way, you need to follow order of operations, all right? So you do negative 72 divided by 4. Well, 72 divided by 4 is 4 goes into 7 once, the remainder of 3, and 4 goes into 32 eight, uh, 8 times. So this is negative 18, and negative 18 divided by 2 is still negative 9. Notice, if you do 4 divided by 2 first and get 2, you get the wrong answer, and that's because of order of operations. That's a tie, and you have to do the one on the left there. So we, we're going to be doing this with integers, all right? whole numbers, positive and negative whole numbers. All right, so two negative signs turns the problem back to positive. All right, so the first one, 24 times negative 2, well, 24 times positive 2 is 48. I have to be a little less sloppy. So that's negative 48, right? And then when you have two negatives, it goes back to positive. So how many signs does this have? This has two negative signs in it. So the answer is going to be positive. And again, right, order of operations, but because it's all multiplying, there's a commutative property of multiplying, which says you can do it in any order. So you could do this in any order you want because it's all multiplying. But negative 6 times 4 is negative 24, and negative 24 times negative 2 is back to positive 48. Two negatives make a positive. So negative 32 divided by 4 is negative 4. Negative 32 divided by negative 8 switches back to positive. Two negatives make a positive. All right, once again, this one's order of operations. 32 divided by negative 4, negative 8. Negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4 again. All, of, all right, both of these last two are positive 4. All right, so what's the more general rule? So let's see this. So I'm multiplying 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. Now I'm going to help you out. That's 120. All right, because it's 1 times 2 is 2, times 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24, 24 times 5 is 120. So what is it, once I put one negative in it, what's the answer? Negative 120. Once I put two negatives in it, what's the answer? Positive 120. Okay, so now what do we think is going to keep happening here? What if I have three and four negatives? Well, three negatives, where if it was positive 
for a two, it's got it. Where is it going to go? It's got to go to negative now. Three negatives make it negative. Well, what happens if it's got four negatives? All right, back to positive. Five negatives, it's negative. All right, can we come up with a rule maybe for this? Right, when there was one negative, three negatives, five negatives, seven, nine, eleven negatives, the answer will be negative. Yeah, so if there's an odd amount of negatives, the answer is negative. If there's zero, two, four, I didn't do six, eight, the answer will be positive. Even amount. All right, now there is an exception. We hardly ever say the word exception in math, but it's almost always something with zero, and that's the case here, right? Negative 31 times zero has a negative in it, but the answer is not negative. It's zero, and right? Because zero times everything is zero, and so that makes the answer neutral, right? right? There's a positive side of the number line. There's a negative side to a number line, and right in the middle is zero, which is neutral. If you have two friends that are having an argument, you want to stay out of it, you say, I want to stay neutral. So notice, this violates the rule. One negative, it doesn't matter. It's still zero. That is two negatives. Still zero. Still neutral, because it's multiplying by zero. All right? You're never, ever going to write a negative sign or a positive sign on zero ever in your life, because it's never that. It's always neutral. Also, dividing by zero causes a problem. So one of those answers is zero, and one of them has no answer. So let's look at this. So you say you have a six gallon bucket here, okay? And you want to put nothing in there, all right? I want to put nothing. I'm a six divided by zero, all right? How many times can I put, the, put six, zero into six? Well, I can put zero into six forever, all right? So it's, the answer here is not zero. Zero doesn't go into six gallons zero times. It goes in as many times as you want. It goes infinitely, really. But we say that this has no answer. We say this, and the word for no answer in math is undefined. Here, right, say you have a zero gallon bucket, right, and you're trying to fit six, six gallons in there. Well, that fits in, doesn't fit in, it's zero. That one is zero. So zero divided by six is zero. But six divided by zero is undefined. You can never have, here's the shortcut, you can never have zero up there, ever. Doesn't matter what's inside, right? It is undefined. Let's see if we understood that. So which one is zero? Which one is undefined? Three goes into zero, doesn't fit, goes in zero times. So zero divided by three is zero. Three divided by zero, has no answer. It is undefined. Three divided by zero has no answer. All right, so let's practice. So five times negative 11, negative 55 times one, still negative 55. Negative 16 divided by two, two negatives make a positive, so positive eight. Three negatives, this answer is going to be negative because there's three of them. And one times six times five is 30, so it's negative 30. Four negatives means it's going to be positive. One times two is two, two times four is eight, eight times 10 is 80, positive 80. Which expression is undefined? It's the one with the zero out there. You cannot divide by zero. This is the one that's zero. All right. This one has three negatives, but the answer is not negative. It's not positive. It is what? It's not undefined either, which is students do that on the test all the time. The answer is neutral, right? Because the answer is zero and zero is neutral. Good luck on the homework.